Hello. So I'm out in the woods for a quick, quick set pick actually before I've got a, an appointment to have a chat to someone on a podcast. Um, and actually, despite being in a bit of a rush, I just realised there's a video that I should have done ages ago before mushroom season started that would be really useful. So I saw this and I've stopped to, to give you a chat. It's going to be slightly longer than my usual videos because rather than learning how to identify this mushroom, we are going to go through the identification features of mushrooms generally um, and how they might be helpful when you're trying to identify from a book. Um, so often times we, we have people come onto the forums, onto the, the Facebook groups and, and they want to immediately be able to identify this one, this one and this one. And sometimes that's perfectly possible. Um, they've just got really clear, nice, easy identification markers, a hedgehog mushroom, for example, or a puffball. There really isn't anything else it can be. Um, other times it's it's an exercise in explaining to people that, that it's the devil's in the detail. You have to look at individual parts of a fungus rather than the whole thing to try and identify what it is. Um, so I've got a couple of things to show you. Um, and we're just going to go through almost like a, a checklist of the things you should be thinking about when you want to identify a fungus. So the first thing is that I have pulled this out, can you see, with the whole stem base intact. Sometimes, and have a, a look before you do it, there's going to be something fragile down there and you're going to want to excavate it really carefully. Um, so if it's got a stem, pull it out of the ground very carefully. Do so anyway, just in case there's a, a feature you might miss. Um, and then if you're effectively keying things out, if you're starting from scratch and you've got a book and you don't know which sections to start looking through in the book, um, you're going to want to have a, a little list of things you can go through that you can rule out whole genera, whole families, whole areas of the book. Um, so the first and easiest of those is spore colour. Um, as mycologists or, or very experienced uh, foragers, we often find we don't need to do a spore print. Um, because either we know what colour the spores are and we know what family or genus we're in, um, or just because there's enough other features that, that help us to identify something. But if you are new to identifying, it's just a lovely thing to do anyway. You can make little artistic patterns from them and things, but just cut the stem off if it's got a stem and put the spore bearing part, so the gills or the pores or uh, teeth, whatever you've got, down. Um, you can do so onto a piece of paper. Uh, if you've got the option, do it half on black paper, half on white paper, or, sneaky trick, uh, onto glass, which sounds like it's a, an odd thing to have in your house, but if you look at the front of all your picture frames, take a piece of glass out of the front of a picture frame, do your spore print directly onto the glass, and then you'll be able to move it over different coloured things. So if it's white and it's on white paper, you may not see the spore print, but if it's on glass and you move it over dark paper or a dark surface, you'll be able to see the white spores. Um, we want to be looking at whether it has gills or pores or teeth, as we were saying, or some other surface on the bottom. I mean, that's the, the main three that I can think of, but there are some that have their spores inside them, gastroid fungi. Um, but, you know, generally, if you're looking at a mushroom shaped mushroom, um, it's going to have gills or pores or teeth. Um, how those are attached to the stem, if there is a stem, are is a really important characteristic. It will be listed in every uh, description of a mushroom that you find. Um, so these, can you see, they do join, they join slightly, perhaps slightly less than the, the full depth of the gill. Um, so we could call that, it's got a little tooth coming down maybe, we could call that emarginate. Um, you could call it adnate if it was joined the, f the full depth of the the gill. Uh, you could call it adnext, which this may be seen as, if it's joined but only part of the, the gill depth. Uh, free if it's not touching the, the stem at all, if the gills aren't touching the stem at all. Decurrent if the gills or pores or whatever are running down the stem, so they're covering some of the stem as well. It can be difficult to tell like this, so uh, one thing that you can do, I'm going to struggle because uh, I realised I need a a glamorous assistant. But I'm going to put you there for a second and I'm going to do this. If I had my knife with me, which I probably should have, it would be easier. But hopefully we can get 
yeah almost a cross section so if you cut it in half it's much easier to see how much of the gill is attached to the stem it's going to struggle to focus on me now um so i would say those are add next probably possibly even close to free but add next for now um once you've looked at, at the spore bearing surface the gills or the pores you want to turn your attention to the stem or the stipe um i've pulled ours apart a little bit now but i think this has still got yeah nice features on it so you want to know whether the stem loads a little little grub um whether the stem has any ornamentation that just means uh, any texture or pattern or um anything that that would distinguish it from just a, a plain uh shiny smooth stem so this one does a little bit you can see it's got a kind of snake skinny pattern here um, it also has a ring so whether a stem has a ring or not is a really important feature um, within this this genus which is uh, amanita it's also often important to look at whether the stem whether the stem has striations which just means lines on it whether the the ring rather has lines on it this one actually does but i don't think it's getting picked up very well by the camera there we go um, we also really need to look at the stem base, which is why we excavated so carefully at the beginning. So you can see that this we would call a bulbous stem. So the, the stem has this kind of bulb shape on the bottom of it. It's not an emarginate bulb. So an emarginate bulb would be a very distinct kind of shelf-like start to the bulb, almost like a, a right angle. Um, it doesn't have a vulva sac, so a vulva sac is uh, like a wobbly egg that the, the mushroom has grown out of that you would still see the remains of at the bottom of your mushroom. Um, once we have looked at the stem, we can look at the cap surface. So this one we can see has lots of little spots and blotches that are they're separate from the cap surface. They would be, I will just show you. They would rub off with your finger. Um, these are called scales, often or scales perhaps, not so much warts. Well, these don't look as warty as some. What they actually are is universal veil remnants. So this would have been covered with a, a veil, a protective layer when it was a, a little baby. It would have looked like a, a little round-ish egg. Um, and the veil remnants, the veil would have been to protect it. And as the mushroom grows, the veil does not grow, so it, it splits open, almost like if you kept a baby in the same clothes, like the Hulk. Um, it grows and grows, and the thing protecting it and surrounding it does not grow, so it, it rips, it tears into little pieces. Um, you might see uh, a cap that has lots of fibrous bits going out from the middle. Uh, you might see a cap that has uh, scales, so little... Uh, parts lifting up but still very much part of the surface um, there are lots of, of different possibilities for texture um, the shape of the cap is also important this one was kind of quite a, a typical slightly domed mushroom shape but it might be pointy or conical it might be they call it infundibuliform uh, which is just funnel shaped but mushroom books have good words um, yeah, it could have a, an umbo, which is like a little nipple in the middle of it. Um, it could have its margin in the books. It's just the edge of the cap, this bit here. So the margin can be wavy, it can be irregular, it can be inrolled, so rolled in under the rest of the mushroom. Um, and those are all things that will be listed in the description in your mushroom book. So when I'm teaching, I often tell people that that they almost want to cover the pictures up initially. Just look at the description, really look at it and, and tick things off and then have a look at the picture. It is important, but it's not the thing that's gonna tell you most about your fungus or how to identify it. Um, another thing that we always do is smell. We smell our mushrooms. So this one doesn't have a terribly distinct smell, but sometimes they'll smell of aniseed or almonds or ink or sperm, strangely. Um, <laughs> uh, there's, there's a lot of different things that a mushroom can smell of that will tell you something. Sometimes crab that's been left out in the sun. Um, it's important to, to give it a sniff. That will be listed if it's impo important to identifying the mushroom. Um, staining 
is another thing that we look at. This one does stain. I'm not sure that you're going to pick it up very well in this light on the camera. I can see that down here it's stained where it's been grabbed and and poked. It's stained kind of orangey pink. Um, some mushrooms will stain bright yellow. It's always where they've been damaged. Some will stain bright blue. Oh, I might have one that stains blue actually. Yeah, so this uh, has yellow pores and then we press the yellow pores and just slowly you can see it come in blue. Um, where it stains is important. Always do a cross section of your fungus um, through the stem and the stem base if it has one. Um, it'll tell you quite a lot about the mushroom in some cases and um, whether it has a hollow stem, whether it's uh, staining in the flesh inside. Um, it can be a really useful thing. Um, and oh, and habitat. So you want to know whether it was growing from wood. If so, what wood? If it was growing from the ground, what were the nearest trees? Within 25 metres, what trees were there? Um, all of this is going to be building you up a picture over time, layers upon layers of, of useful information about your fungus. Um, that's as much as I can think of off the top of my head. I'm probably missing out quite a lot. If you're unsure about whether something's important, um, have a look in the front section of all good mushroom books. There will be uh, like keying out pages almost. So it might have lots of pictures of the ways gills and, and pores and things can attach to a stem. It might have pictures of the, the shapes of the top of mushrooms. So that's a really nice dome shaped mushroom. This is a sep. We've covered those in a, another video if you want to have a look. Good edible species. But that's a, a nice example of pores. It might not look like holes until you get up really close and then it is definitely holes nice example of reticulation so a, a net like uh, texture especially at the top of the stem there and um, hopefully that is enough information for the moment for you to feel like you can really take the, the fungi that you found and start to look at the at the book um, and find it useful as opposed to imposing when you're identifying your fungus um, I probably will redo this at some point when I've got a helper that can hold my camera so that I can use both hands and, and talk to you more effectively. Um, but because the season's already started and people are out there and doing collecting and, and often are struggling with their books and how they even begin to, to know how to narrow it down, I thought it might be a useful video to, to put up for today. Um, do subscribe to the YouTube channel. It, it's a, a useful thing to me to try and build an audience and you will get uh, notifications when I put new videos up. Um, we're on Facebook as Broth and Butter as both a page and a group and on Instagram too. Um, happy hunting! Enjoy your, your mushroom season! <laughs>